I'm really happy to talk about my upcoming trip to England and London. I'm very excited. First thing I'm going to do is uh, go and speak at a conference at the Tate Modern Museum, and the conference is called Agency Beyond Agency and Automatism. So it's about the history of photography as art since the 1960s. So that's recent photography, and it's really about the changes in photography as a medium since the rise of the digital camera and digital image making. And my particular talk there is about uh, the use of medical images by artists. So I'm interested in artists who try to do, for example, portraits that use things like DNA uh, profiles, DNA fingerprints, or they may use um, cellular images, or they may use um, x-rays. And there's quite a few artists who are experimenting with these kinds of uh, technologies, and so I'm very interested in how does that compare to the more traditional sort of portraits that we know of through painting and straight photography, quote-unquote straight photography. And after that conference, which is July 10th to 12th in London, I'm going to be going to Oxford, and my book is coming out, and that's coming out, I think the official date is June 8th, but they're going to have a reception in Blackwells in Oxford on June 14th for the book, and my book is called Portraits and Persons. So it's a book that sort of deals with the intersection between art history and philosophy. And I start out by talking about how philosophers are interested in what a self is and what a person is and how the mind relates to the body. But I think because philosophers tend to be verbal, they, when they talk about these things, they will often refer to novelists like Tolstoy or somebody, but they don't ever refer to painters and artists. And so I thought, well, there's a big gap here and I can work on filling this gap. So I'm looking at the nature of a person and how portrait artists can tell us something about what a person is. So perhaps surprisingly, my book starts off with a chapter on animals. <laughs> Um, are there portraits of animals and what is the difference between a picture of, you know, my cat or your dog versus a picture of your child or my grandmother? And so I have a definition of a portrait and it may be controversial, but the definition says a portrait shows a distinct individual with an inner state and an individual that can pose. So it's crucial that the person is uh, putting on a self-representation. So because animals and little babies don't do that third thing, I do end up saying that, strictly speaking, no, you don't have portraits of cats and dogs. And of course, everybody says to me, but my dog poses. <laughs> and I know the feeling since I kind of think my cats pose too. Uh, the book goes on and I talk about um, issues about uh, the nature of the self as it's shown by artists who did a lot of self-portraits like Frida Kahlo or Rembrandt or Cezanne. And I have a chapter called Intimacy that's about artists' portraits of their lovers and also their parents and sometimes their children. So I, I'm dealing with how do artists show the close emotional relations they have with certain people. And the last chapter is sort of ties in with the Tate conference because it's a chapter on experimental portraiture. And there I talk about these portraits that use things like uh, DNA fingerprints or fMRI brain scans and I talk about how these just don't fulfill the kind of notion of portrait that I'm working with in the book. Yes, they give us information about a person's interior, about their genetic makeup, but that's not what we're looking for when we look to try to understand somebody but looking at their portrait. So suppose you see a picture and it's that people are studying the brain when you're in love. <laughs> here's a brain in love and here's a brain that's not in love. And so does this, how does this compare to a more traditional portrait like some of the ones I was talking about where the artist shows the, their beloved uh, partner or spouse? And so that's the kind of thing I'm interested in. I don't think we're ever going to really say when we look at a brain scan, oh, I recognize that, that person is in love. <laughs>